Well, hello everybody and welcome once again to Lightning TV, brought to you by mjdphoto.biz. A busy weekend of league action once again, with Saturday's visitors to the Thunderdome being Andre Payet and the Sheffield Steel Dogs, followed by a tough road game away at Bracknell. Now on Saturday, Lightning took the points in a 4-2 win over the Steel Dogs, and after the game we caught up with a couple of the guys. Another hard-fought win. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've played a fair bit over the last couple of uh, months. Um, you know, we know what to expect, and uh, yeah, we you know we ground out uh, like you said a, a hard fall win. Just talking to Andre Pye a little while ago, he was a little bit frustrated with maybe some of the calls. Now, I'm not going to get into a debate about the, the refereeing and stuff like that, but uh, uh, you know, that was a tough game for both sides out there tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I don't know why he complains about things. You know, if they're going to play the way that they do, they're going to get called for things. It's uh, you know, it goes a little bit above and beyond really what's needed. Um, but it, it's it's fun, it's pantomime, um, and uh, yeah, the boys just dug down and, and worked hard. I was going to say that you used that word pantomime. You, I, I saw you on the bench uh, tonight, and uh, Andre skated past, and you did have a bit of a, a chat to one another, both full of smiles. You know, you 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 two go way back, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, I played the game far too long, and uh, and I've met many a guy like him, and uh, yeah, he knows he can't pull the wool over my eyes, so we just have a bit of chat, and yeah. Talk about nothing hockey related. Uh, well, I just, like I say, he's a pantomime villain, and uh, you just uh, just give him the credit he deserves. Really. And he, he enjoys that role. We're talking to him. He just enjoy. He loves that role. Of course he does. He uh, he eats, sleeps, and breathes hockey. Um, you know, like I said, sometimes they can go a little bit uh, above and beyond, but um, all credit to him. Back to the game in particular, you tonight. Um, one thing was noticeable: you weren't on the ice uh, at all tonight. What, what, what's the injury, or what, what's kept you out? Yeah, um, I, I pulled my uh, glute a couple of weeks ago, so I've been playing for a couple of weeks, with, and that's why I can't really skate. Um, and you know, I had to chat with Pooley, and we just think this weekend might be a weekend where I can rest it. Um, you know, I just—it's very frustrating when you, you're only playing 60, 70 percent of your potential. And uh, you know, I think I—I uh, I, you know, I want, I want to be obviously 100 percent. And um, so we just looked at it, and this seemed like a good time. It's a shame because you know, obviously, read your Twitter, your tweets with interest on Twitter there, and you know, you, you know, obviously, you could see there was you were struggling a little bit because of the injury, and, and then you, there was a tweet about your slight lack of confidence, and you're going back in the goal, and all of the next game you sit out. Yeah, I know that's the way it works, isn't it? It's uh, I can just barely, you know, I can't skate, so um, it, it's really difficult, and you know, I just don't end up tearing it and, and making it really bad, and then you know, missing a good portion of the season. Um, you know, touch wood. I've been you know pretty fortunate with injuries, so, you know considering my age, and um, I just think you know you just know your body, and um, yeah, hopefully the goal scorer will continue when I get back. Brilliant. Well, we we told you in the summer, albeit on video, which which uh, my fault, we did, it didn't it didn't get broadcast for one reason, one technical reason or another. And we were talking about you joining Lightning, uh, you know, and that was pretty much before you played a league game for Lightning. We're what 18 games into the season now. Um, What's it feel like in the, in the Lightning dressing room? You, you've been around a few teams. Yeah, um, you know what? It, it's everything that I thought and more. Um, they're a great bunch of guys, they really are. And like I said before, um, you see that as the opposing team, you see that. Um, I still don't think we've reached anywhere near the potential that we have there. Um, but everyone's upbeat in the dressing room, everyone gets on. There's not one bad egg, and, that, you know, and that's rare. And uh, it's just a great place. Everyone wants to come and train, everyone wants to come and play. And it's a great place to be. It's you all play with a smile on your face. Historically, uh, you know, lightning sides have always been like that. But even you're playing with a smile on your face now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I got a little bit stale over at Basin for three years and a little frustrated that we didn't win anything. Um, so you know, a fresh challenge. And uh, like I said, the room's great. The guys are great. Everyone supports each other. So yeah, I, I you know, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, some of the guys have said, oh, it's taken years off you. So I don't know. That's probably why I pulled my uh, my glute. But um, yeah, I'm no, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, um, talking about Adam Calder, obviously, you know, the setup to the side was, was absolutely there, wasn't it? Until Adam suffered this, this fairly horrific, horrific injury. Brilliant to see him last, back, last week back, uh, albeit on crutches, in a bit of pain, but with a smile on his face. But Camel's come in and done a job, hasn't he? Definitely, yeah. I mean, Coles is, you know, he's a unique kind of player. He's that sniper that uh, we thought was going to, you know, be that, that missing piece. And um, yeah, it's it's sport. It's, these things happen. So uh, you know, we wish him a speedy recovery and uh, and good luck for the future. But yeah, Cammy's come in. Um, he's a star. He's uh, he's a right little character, and he just wants to work hard and do well. And uh, you know, and that that over exudes in the dress room, and everyone else feeds off that. So uh, it's it's good he's fitted in. I'm just I'm just hoping he gets to learn some English for the end of the season so I can get to interview. 
interview him. That's good. His goal celebration tonight was superb. I think you should interview him now. I think <laughs> it would be something that might get more hits than anything. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, get a couple of beers in him, and the English comes out a little bit. Um, a yeah, but it's not English we can broadcast, though, is it? I, there may be a few superlatives in there, but, you know, he's, uh, no, he's all right. He's a diamond. Brilliant. Now, going on to the, the whole set, the, the rest of the season now, um, as I say, we're sort of 17, 18 games in. Um, the, the side is starting to settle down. Obviously, obviously, we had a bit of a disturbance. Obviously, Cammy had to come in to replace Adam Calder, and you've set out a game. And, and Dan Harris, you know, is, is on the bench an awful lot. Hopefully, he'll be back fairly soon. But obviously, we don't want to rush him. How good is this Lightning side? How far can they go, do you think? Like I said, I don't think we've reached anywhere near our potential yet, um, which is, you know, exciting and scary, because hopefully we will. Um, and we're, you know, we're still up in the mix. Uh, we've, you know, we've, we've lost a couple of games that we shouldn't have. Um, but, yeah, no, I, like I said, I'm excited every time I come to practice. And uh, you just don't know what's going to show up, unfortunately. But we're, we're starting to gel and starting to find each other. And uh, I think, yeah, we've definitely got a contender for, for every trophy out there. Because the, the ingredients are there, aren't they? In, in the past, maybe we've been missing that one ingredient. But we've always had the flair, we've had the pace, we've had the skill. And maybe this year we've got the edge to back that up as well. Definitely. Um, I think the one thing, I, and that's just from experience, I've, I've noticed, I think some of the younger guys who have come through last year and had a good year, the expectation might might be getting to them a little bit, you know, so they just they just find their feet again. And um, But, you know, some of the players have been, have been outstanding, you know, Farney and, you know, it's just I look at these young guys and the maturity they have on them. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's exciting times. Do you think sometimes I'm struggling to keep up? <laughs> That's where the old head comes in, you know what I mean? It's not all about speed everywhere. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've got the Y in us. So, um, but, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, these guys have got the energy. I, I miss that. I really do. And one thing as well is the one thing that, that, you, that, that has happened is the, the Lightning fans have, have taken you in really quickly. You've always been this pantomime villain that everybody loves to you know, just give, you, give you a bit of banter um, off the ice. But these, these, these guys are rude. They're right behind you right now. You know, I can only play the way that I play and um, and hopefully that'll be enough and uh, yeah it seems that, uh, that they've taken to me which is good um, and you feel it and, and it makes you want to play that a little bit more so um, yeah no, I thank them very much Brilliant, well Nick thanks very much for talking to us, I know it's been a while since the, uh, the summer, hopefully we'll catch up again soon hopefully get you back um, from that injury and uh, get you back on the ice again. Looking forward to it Cheers So I'm here with the chairman of the Milton Keynes Lightning Supporters Club, uh, Dave Bunyan. Now tonight, Dave, having had another great charity month in November, we've managed to hand over a cheque for £2,700 of kidney research, which in these times is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? It just goes to prove what a fan base we've got here at Milton Keynes. You know, from like day one we started it, early in November, we found the charity we wanted to do. It was close to a lot of people's hearts in Milton Keynes. The whole club, the players, the fans, sponsors, they got right behind it. We had a golf day, what a success that was. We've done a tombola, you know, we've done sponsored shirts, chuck a duck, grids, Natty's grids, everyone's got in, 2,700. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, isn't it? Because, you know, you, you look at um, other teams around the league that are maybe having, you know, a few cash problems and stuff like that. and. It, ju it just shows you that, that with hard work you can actually do it, but it's got to be a whole team thing, hasn't it? Everybody's, everybody's got to be on board, haven't they? Yeah, I'd like to think that the supports club has got a close relationship with the actual management and the team of Lightning, and I think that's what makes us probably unique in the EPL and possibly the Elite League, is the closeness of the players, the management and the actual supporters. You know, we've got in the bar, if you go in the bar right now, you've got players talking to the fans. How many other sports do you get that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it just shows absolutely great. And, you, you know, it, I mean, what sort of amount you're looking at? 30,000 for the season again, contribution? Yeah, we won't be far off 30,000. I looked at some figures before tonight where we went through with uh, Vito and Nick. Obviously, we just had the uh, replacement of uh, Camille Turdek, Turdek in for us. Yeah, we looked at the figures. We're going the right way. And the fans have got behind it from day one again. We've got the Zato Club that's in operation. We've got the Gold Club, the Supporters Club. Everything's being channeled into the team. You look around the EPL. There's teams out there that are struggling. Not only just Peter Rothamptons, but other teams will surely come, come on board and see what's going on. And I think the only way forward nowadays is supporters. It's, they do have to engage their fan base, don't they? I mean, I know that, that Peterborough had a, uh, uh, a forum this week where the, the management have actually opened up to the, the fan base and said, look, you know, you can help us, but this is how, how you can do it. And you're right, it, it, this is the only way to go, isn't it? I think it is, mate. And I think we're, we're very lucky in Milton Keynes that we've got Vito Rausa, Harry Halton and Nick Paul, three guys that care passionately about this club. And I'm, I believe they won't get the golden goose to lay the golden egg. Whereas, slowly, slowly, catching monkey, we're still here and all being well, we'll be here next year and the year after. 
David, that's absolutely brilliant. £2,700 of kidney research. I know they're absolutely over the moon with that. And, you know, and everybody connected with Lightning should be as well. Absolutely fantastic. Well done to you and everybody else. And thanks to you as well, Chris. You know, you promote the team as much as anybody, mate. You know, MKTV, what a breath of fresh air it is as well. Thank you very much. Well, once again, many thanks to the guys for coming up and chatting to us after the game. Let's go and check out the rest of the weekend's results and check out Sunday night's league table. So as well as that lightning result, there were four other games in the English Premier League on Saturday night. High Flying Basingstoke took the points at home to Bracknell with a 5-2 win, whilst Guildford beat Telford 3-1 at home. Elsewhere, Slough beat Peterborough Phantoms, while Swindon rocked Manchester Phoenix with a 4-2 win over their northern rivals at the Link Centre. On Sunday, Lightning travelled to Bracknell only to lose by two goals, Bees taking that one 4-2, while Manchester sunk to a rare point this weekend, as they were beaten at home 4-3 by a Basingstoke side that are looking increasingly hard to beat. Peterborough went down 3-2 at home to Slough, which was, which was a bit embarrassing for whoever does their Peterborough Live Lounge score service. They'd pre-advertised the game as a Phantoms win over the Jets on Facebook. Last of all, it would have been smiles all round for Steel Dogs, as they picked up two much-needed points in a 3-1 win at Telford. So on to the league table, and it's Bison who now have some daylight between them and Manchester at the top, courtesy of their four-point weekend and Phoenix draw in a blank. Then you can throw a handkerchief over the chasing pack with Guildford, Milton Keynes, Slough, Bracknell and Swindon, all within four five points of one another. Sheffield leapfrog Peterborough into that last playoff place courtesy of their win over Telford which keeps the Shropshire side rooted to the bottom for another week. Still a long way to go but daylight starting to show at both ends of the EPL. Just a couple of notes for your diary. On Monday the 3rd of December, there's a bingo night on behalf of the Supporters Club of Milton Keynes Lightning. That's going to be held at the Campanile Hotel in Fenny Stratford here in Milton Keynes, 7.30 start. Now on 8th of December, very, very special event taking place in the bar after the Guildford game. That's a promise auction. Loads and loads of stuff up for grabs in this auction, uh, just in time for Christmas, of course. Now if you want any more information on that, all you need to do is go to the Lightning website, www.mk-lightning.com. Now, in other hockey news, the Milton Keynes Falcons, the ladies hockey team based here in Milton Keynes, of course. Now, they've been in local press recently because they've brought out their own 2013 calendar. Now, all proceeds from the sales of the calendars go back to help Falcons with their ice time, and they've already sold the first lot of 200. Now, if you want to order a calendar, all you need to do is to contact any member of the club or go to the calendar shop in Milton Keynes Shopping Centre. Well, as you may well know, it's been a great year so far for Great British Ice Hockey. Now, and the GB under-20s are no different. They get off to Ukraine in just a couple of weeks to take on the rest of their pool 1B, ready for the World Championships. And after the game, I caught up with GB coach, also Steel Dogs head coach, Andre Payet. So, Andre, uh, GB under-20s coming up in uh, Latvia, isn't it? Yeah, uh, looking, looking really forward to it. Uh, we got a great bunch of young British players, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic experience. I'm looking forward to it, uh, and uh, can't wait to get over there. So what is it? It's, it's eight days in, I said Latvia, it's eight, eight days in the Ukraine, isn't it, in a group, a group of four? Uh, I th believe it's Poland, Italy, uh, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and us, so it's a group of five. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough, uh, tough one, but uh, we got a great team morale. The team's already come together quite well, and... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the guys so far, and we're going to go over there and do the best we can for uh, Great Britain. I mean, obviously you're busy with Steel Dogs, and you, you've, got a, you've got a big old job there. You're not just uh, player coach, but I know you get involved in the marketing and sponsorship side as well. How often do you get the luxury, if you like, of going out and, and seeing the rest of your team, your GB team? I don't get the luxury, you know, other than when we play against guys or, uh, you know, I've worked hard at it, but, you know, Steel Dogs have taken a lot of my time as well, and I've just had a new more baby, and, you know, it seems like it's right now, it's like everything's all over the place, but... Uh, you know, i got to get the Steel Dogs winning games, and uh, once we turn the corner, uh, things will get a lot easier for me on the home front. And then, uh, you know, the GB stuff, we've had two good camps. Uh, I've been really impressed with what I've seen so far. I've got a great coaching staff with uh, Tommy and uh, Peter, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, I was going to say, Tom Watkins and uh, Peter Russell, if you're going to be a coach, a head coach, that's the kind of backup you want, isn't it? Yeah, I've known them both a long time, and I played with Tommy, and uh, you know I know Tommy's got my back, and uh, you know Peter's. A, we got a good mix of guys, and uh, you know um, I'm I'm pleased with the coaching staff. I'm really pleased that uh, Tony's put this confidence in me, and uh, we're going to go over there and uh, make our country proud. 
and that is a good squad. I mean, you know, to, to, to ride on the back of what the what the main GB squad have done in recent weeks, that would be absolutely superb, wouldn't it? It'd be absolutely brilliant into the end, end of the year for GB hockey in general. Well, let's not count our chickens before they're hatched, but. Uh you know, I, I'm just a really happy about the experience. Uh, I know we'll do well. You know, there was three or four guys from overseas we wanted to bring in. Uh, they made the decision not to come. Uh, so we've gone with the guys that are here and the guys that want to play for the team. Uh, you know, playing for your country is not an option when it suits you. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm disappointed that we didn't get a few guys that we would have liked to have. Uh, but I'm really happy with the team. Aaron Connolly is going to be a great captain. Um, you know, Jack Watkins is an assistant, and then uh, Ferreira from Peterborough. I got really good leadership. I'm going to put a lot of onus on them. Uh, we're going to go over there, and we're going to make make ourselves proud. I know that. Certainly, certainly seems like it's a hell of a side. You've got you've got a lot of depth of experience in there, both elite league and uh, and over in the U.S. as well, haven't you? Well, we got two overseas players coming in, but other than that, it's all it's all homegrown, and uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, I, if if ever a decision between, is between a player that that's overseas and a player that's here, if they're both of the same ability, in my opinion, I'll always take the player that's playing in Great Britain. You know, we have to promote British ice hockey. I've been over here for almost 10 years now, and you know, I, I'm proud of the British game and where it's come. I mean. You know, the EPL, let's be honest, when I started four years ago, there was nowhere near the level it is now. Uh, it's a good league right now. Uh, you know, we've played Hull the last two years and we've been neck and neck. We beat them this year. Uh, last year we tied them. We played the Steelers. We lost by a goal. Uh, you know, this is good hockey. Uh, and uh, I know people come out must see the improvement in the league. Um, and we need to continue to improve with our British players. And I think we're starting to do that. You take a lot of pride up in Sheffield about the fact that you know a lot of your, your a lot of your guys are homegrown talent, you, you t uh, and probably more than more so than the rest of this league. I mean, obviously sometimes it, it can be a budget restriction, but that can't be a bad thing, can it? You know, I, when I first came in, I sat with my owner Shane Smith, and we decided that what our you know our ethos was going to be, and it was made in Sheffield. Uh, we have to compete with the Steelers, uh, and uh, you know. But when you really think about it, every team in the country should be promoting their homegrown guys uh, and giving them a chance. You know, everybody says we need that depth. You know, no offense, we're playing Milton Keynes. You got Wiggins, you know, that's brought in here. I don't know what he's on, but you know, he's he's brought in. You got you know Nicky Chin. You got all these older guys. You know, we're not really promoting the younger players. And uh, every team, you know, Guildford, how many young players do they have? Uh, but you know, I know it's a business, and everybody wants to win hockey games, and that's what we need to do. But you know, in Sheffield, we've got. And, you know, my whole team's still 20, 21, 22, 23. You know, we got all young British kids and we're trying to do the best we can with them. You know, sometimes what I love the luxury of bringing in an experienced older guy, you know, it would make the world a difference for us. But that's not what we're about. Uh, we're about made in Sheffield and uh, we take pride in it. Uh, work with what we have, you know. You know, and uh, I think that, you know, we're proven, we're proven something. You know, we're, we're, we're in every game. And last year we had a fantastic season. Uh, you know, and this year we just, we'll get back on track. And I'm sure you'll see us in the top five before the end of the season. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Certainly the work ethic is there, you know, for the team. And uh, I suppose the, the Andre Payet passion is, is there as well. I mean, you know, you, you play with, uh, you've been over here, like you say, 10 years. You play with a little glint in your eye. You're still enjoying your hockey. I can see that. And I think sometimes you, you relish being a pantomime villain. I love it, you know, but to be fair, I found this year very hard. Uh, it seems that we're never getting the right call. We're never, you know, I don't know if because what we did last year and the way we did it, you know, the league said, well, we're, we're going to call Sheffield all the time. But, you know, I'm not making excuses. You know, I'm the coach. We need to see what's happening and readjust our game. And uh, we need to cut the penalties out. And, uh, you know, if that means we... You know, we try to play the game the right way and hard, but, uh, you know, we do have to cut down the penalties, and I think that'll be a big factor. And, you know, I just want to get the guys wins, and, uh, you know, I'm just frustrated tonight. I thought we worked hard, and, again, we fell a little short. And, you know, it's tough to win on the road, and nobody's going to come in MK and, you know, beat them consistently. But, you know, we've played MK three times now. We've lost by a goal twice and by two tonight. It just, uh, you know, those are the games we were winning last year, and maybe maybe that's that little spark goes Lynch broad and, you know, maybe maybe I need to, uh, to you know, you know my ownership's you know right behind me, and if I have to make changes, we will, uh, you know. And I just feel that uh, we're right there, we're right there by a goal every game. And once we start winning those one goal games, the guys will get confidence, and uh, you know we'll, we'll be there. We'll be in the top five by the end of the year. Good stuff. And going back to GB again, um, same sort of edge. Is that the sort of edge you're bringing into the GB setup as well? With the, with the, with the same as you have with the Steel Dogs. Maybe toned down very slightly, but certainly the passion is going to be there, isn't it? It's one of the most frustrating things in the world. Everybody says, you know, Andre Payet, you know, coaching GB, blah, blah, blah. You know, look, I've played under four NHL coaches of the year. You know, I have experience. Uh, I'm not going to go coach a team at the international level the way I coach the Steel Dogs at the EPL level. 
Um, it's a whole different set of circumstances, different set of rules. Uh, I know the game inside out, and you know we're not going to be you know dumping and chasing and, and playing the body, and, and, and that's what we we can't do that over there. You know we need to stay out of the box and play a different different game, and we will. Uh, I know the game, and uh, you know I, I'll, I coach every team. Every team's different. You know there's not a right and wrong way to play the game. Uh, you know if I had four, if I had a really skilled team, we would play a different way. But also, what I have with my Sheffield lads is guys that'll go through the wall for you and work hard, and so we try to play a hard working style of play, uh, limiting our our, our, our mistakes you know with an offensive team maybe I would you know play a little bit more wide open but you know you have to coach your team you know and when people in England say you know Payette does this Payette does, it frustrates me because uh, you know uh, give me a chance that's all I gotta ask I don't, I, I, well, for one minute, Andre, I don't think anybody doubts your, your absolute passion for the game and you know your, your ability as well. It, it, it is a case of you proved you proved a lot of doubters wrong last season, and it'll be interesting to see what you can do with GB, and that that's going to be uh, the big thing. It is, and what I can do with the Steel Dogs team, you know, if we if we get back in the top five before the end of the year, we'll prove a lot of people wrong that are calling for my head right now and saying that you know I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I was coach of the area last year. I do know what I'm doing, and uh, you know, we'll see where we are at the end of the year. So he's going to say, no one doubts your passion. You'll get there. Andre, thanks very much for speaking to us. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week, of course. Don't forget, this coming Saturday's visitors to Thunderdome are Telford Tigers. They're going to want revenge after that beating we gave them up in Telford just a couple of weeks ago. Face-off is 7 o'clock as normal. If you want to get a discount on your tickets, of course, get your tickets from the Thunderdome box office before Friday. For more information, of course, you can go to the Lightning website, www.mk-lightning.com. Have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next time.